Good morning, folks. To begin with a long time coming, thank you to everyone who sends me links and info. Now that my inbox is at DEF CON 1, it's now or never, so thank you. Tarid Meteor Shower begins next week. Find out where Taurus the Bull is in the sky for the best viewing over the next seven to nine days. Our minor quake watch got a moderately significant six-pointer in the Philippines yesterday. USGS downgraded to 6.1. It registered 6.5 in absolute magnitude and as high as 6.3 in moment magnitude. This lazy low pressure system is going to really begin to cool off northern Europe. Take a look at the temperature drops coming for Finland, Norway, and Sweden. New Zealand has or had that front move through. Any reports on severity from the locals is appreciated, while western Australia is in for even more storms in the crop damage zone the next few days. This is a convergence. You might realize I'm zoomed in on the U.S. wind map. Coming out to reveal the warm southern air, remember that, rushing in to meet the northern air. Cyclonic movements and convergence should give away that it's a low pressure system, as seen here in blue. No surprise that that's our watch zone as well for the evening. Also no surprise that the warm southern air causing a heat wave in the DFW area, and also likely the water pump overheating, failing, and leading to the shutdown at the Comanche Peak nuke plant. This bit on the left is the last bit of resonance induced by the CME impact. On the right, when you get PC1 pulsations like this on the following day, it's often indicative of magnetospheric repair phase. We are likely less than 36 hours from the coronal hole impact. Active regions turning the western limb to the right fired a big blast as soon as they got out of view. Anyone surprised? No major flare threats earth-facing, only these long, dark plasma filaments. Let's have a look at upcoming planetary positions. First, in the next eight days, the only thing we really have is the heliocentric conjunction of Mercury and Uranus. Then, things begin to get interesting, pulling up the morning sky on Stellarium. No, you can't see Saturn, but it helps to know where it is. The moon geocentrically conjoins Venus, 1111, then Saturn, then the sun in a total solar eclipse, very close to the monthly perigee, or close approach to Earth. On eclipse day, Venus heliocentrically opposes Neptune, swinging around to line up Saturn with the sun, Mercury revealed in heliocentric opposition as well. In the days following that, Mercury will conjoin the Sun, as seen from the Earth, but as DC symbols pointed out, it's almost another eclipse, or transit as it's known. When I tilt, pull up Mercury's orbit, you see it's highly tilted compared to Earth's, but the planet happens to be near the middle for this pass. A few days after that, Earth passes between Mars and Ceres, followed by the heliocentric conjunction of Mercury and Jupiter. That's not even including the end of November. Lots of things to pay attention to. Eyes open, no fear. It's about 6 a.m. Eastern Time, but I notice YouTube has me locked out, so you get to see this when those schmucks say so. That's the news. Be safe, everyone.